<laughs> Welcome to Malone's Movie Minutes. Things are a little bit different. We have taken it back to the bedroom with a glass of wine. Cheers. Cheers. Hi there, my name's Maud Garrett. I'm filling in for Osha Gunsberg to talk all things movies with Miss Movies herself, Alicia Malone. Hi. Hello. Hi. Fancy seeing you here. Thanks for joining me in my bed. Not the first time. <laughs> no, really, we have done this once before. You can check out the rest on uh, Alicia's YouTube page. Yeah, movies are my jam, but tonight I am taking over Geek Bomb's Whoa. YouTube account. Just a little inception happening, movie inception, geekception, geekception. So I hope you guys are enjoying it. And this is the podcast where we basically talk about the films you should be spending your money on this weekend. So <sighs> some I would recommend seeing, and not going to talk about the ones I wouldn't recommend seeing because I only like to talk about movies that I enjoy in a positive way. Now, let's just take a little bit of time to discuss the uh, accessories in our hands at the moment. Oh, yes. Alicia and I had a little bit of a getaway to the wine valley. <laughs> yeah. And this is a, a wine that Alicia purchased. It's a 2012 duet mm -hmm. from one of the wineries. And it has such a significant note. <laughs> you can't say that without Wanker. saying it. Like, yeah. uh, this is delicious, though, jalapeno. because it is jalapeno-based, and we mm. had a nice little getaway in wine country. Uh, also, before we kick things off, there is a Q&A on this particular Hangout. So if you are on the events page at all, you can say, uh, write your question in, and we will get to them at the end of the show. So whenever you want to, drop that one in. It's super simple. Now, with movies, we kick things off with what's releasing in America. Mm -hmm. So the one that I would recommend people see this weekend is Sin City, A Dame to Kill For. Would now, you, Would you kill for me? I would totally kill for you. <laughs> so you are a dame to kill for. Now, this is one for fans of Sin City. I know you haven't seen the first film, and I, I have a feeling you wouldn't enjoy it because you don't like the gore. You know what? I felt like watching 300, which, again, is a Frank Miller adaptation, um, was, was like watching Jackson Pollock do a painting, but just red blood. Yeah. Everywhere. This one has a lot of gore in it. Uh, if you've seen the first Sin City, it's pretty much the same as that, the same style. The first movie came out nine years ago. Mm. Now this is finally a sequel, but it's also a prequel, and it's also an original movie, as well as being a sequel, if that makes sense. This wine's really good. <laughs> There's four different stories. Two have been written by Frank Miller just for this movie, and in this one it is Frank Miller and Robert, Re Rob Robert Rodriguez. Say it ten times fast. <laughs> Robert Rodriguez. I promise I have only had a sip of wine. Robert Rodriguez. Uh, they co-directing it, and a lot of the same cast from the first are back, like Jessica Alba, mm -hmm. Bruce Willis makes an appearance, Rosario Dawson, as well as some new cast, and it's really fun to see people like Josh Brolin and Joseph Gordon-Levitt in this world, in this very stylized world, and Ava Green as well in now, this world. She looks fantastic. She obviously was in the, the latest 300, and she was such a powerful woman in that. Is she the same in this? She is. She is the dame to kill for. Mm. Now, over the years, I remember they were trying to get Angelina Jolie for the role. Uh, yeah. But Ava Green does a great job. Uh, I like all the intercutting stories. This time the 3D looks incredible. It, apart from the 3D, I'd say the look of the film is the same as the first. I don't think there's been that many technological advancements. Sticking a little bit. Still the like, first time. Oh, sorry, that's my hand expressions. Um, but the, it, the, the 3D does look incredible. The snow, I'm not a fan of 3D, but in a virtual setting mm -hmm. like Avatar or like Sin City, I think it works really, really well. Well, you can manipulate it completely. Yeah. Now, this one, the sequel, has very mixed reviews so far. I think people will either love it or they'll hate it. Why? I'm in the love it category because I don't think it's, it hasn't done, I think people who hate it, has, it hasn't really done anything new or different to the first film. Mm -hmm. It's more of the same. And I think people who watch the first movie and they've been waiting a long time to see the second really wanted to see something yeah. different. They but be wowed. I'm happy with seeing more of the same because I loved the first and even though I'm definitely not an actress, I'm just the worst when it comes to acting. If you've seen my Edge of Tomorrow action stunt where I died. You're the only woman in the world that would, the explosion. You would die with a smile on your face. Yeah, and I couldn't stop smiling. But Sin City is actually one world that I would love to be in. Really? Yeah, even though... You'd have to kill like a hundred people. Yeah, and I'm, I, I, I'm not a violent person and I'm not someone who dresses very sexualized. Like I'm always very covered up and conservative. 
for some reason, I would love to see myself dressed as the Sin City character in that style. Noir. I love the noir style. I could just see you black and white with red 50s. hair and red lips, and it would look yeah. incredible. I would love that. Well, we've got Don Owens who's found the Q&A box, which is very, very exciting. He's just said here we'll select it because when we do, it goes up on the screen, which is quite nice. Oh, cool. There you go. Don Owens just said, I hated the first, but I'm interested in part two. I think if you hated the first, you'll hate this one as okay. well. Good. This is for fans of the first film, definitely. And he says, so would you suggest to see it in 3D over 2D? I would definitely. Most films, I would say, don't even bother with the 3D, even things like Guardians of the Galaxy, I thought the 3D didn't really add anything to it. Mm -hmm. This film is so cool because the snow was falling around you, it was raining around you, mm. and it's incredible. The style is, is the main thing that I love about the film, how much it looks like the graphic novel come to life. And that's what's important, And really. the 3D can really separate it from the background. I like it when, if you are going to do a comic book or a graphic novel adaptation, you actually pay respect to it. Mm. You know, you don't go, oh, I'll just use my interpretation of it. Yet. So there you go. I respect that. Did Ava Green do her typical voice? Not as bad. We always point out how she does Every time this she voice. Does a role, Ava Green will sound like <laughs> she will talk to the back of her throat. Which she definitely does in the 300 sequel. That's all she does. It didn't really notice it. I, it, I wasn't really bothered by it in this film. I will say there are some great cameos. I don't want to give away anything. Dun, dun. People haven't seen it, but that's a clue. <laughs> some fantastic actors cast in perfect roles for them. So the Sin City, A Dame to Kill For, I recommend seeing it because I loved the first. So if you're a hardcore Sin City fan, definitely check it out. Well, that was for you Americans. Let's take it back to our hometown in Australia. Obviously, different release dates, different release times. What should people see in Australia? Well, it's one that I haven't actually seen <gasps> because it hasn't come out here yet. What? We haven't had a chance to view it. Never happens. But out of all the films that are out this week in Australia, this one really intrigues me. It's called Two Twenty Thousand Days on Earth. How, how I was going to say two hundred thousand. Twenty thousand days on Earth. It is Nick Cave's docu drama. Whoa! Part documentary. Nick Cave from the Bad Seeds. Yes, part documentary, part fictional drama. It's taking a look at his life as a rock star as a writer, screenwriter, a poet, all the different facets of him and all the people he's worked with make a cameo, including people like Carly Kylie Minogue. Minogue. <laughs> but it isn't exactly Nick Cave. So trust Nick Cave to do something like this. And the title is 20,000. He he's playing himself. Oh. But it's not quite the Nick Cave he actually is. He's such an artist. He is an artist. He couldn't do a regular documentary, so he wanted to do something completely different. Fantasy and reality mixing together. Watch the trailer. It's online, and it'll blow your mind, even just that two and a half minutes. 20,000 days on Earth refers to his age. How many years is 20,000 days? I think it's some 40-something. I'm not sure exactly. Yeah, but you they do have a special website set up for this movie where you can type in your date of birth and then you can see how many days on earth you've actually lived. I've lived for 12,000 oh. something. Oh, he's 54. Yeah, nearly 55. Nearly 55. There you go. He's looking pretty good for his age. And I'm fascinated with Nick Cave. He was always someone who was really intriguing to me in the rock scene and then when he made his transition to movies, I thought that was really interesting, screenwriting movies. Oh, yeah, 12,000. And 45 days is how long I've been on the earth. Actually, it's around 12,030. Yeah. Calm down. Your birthday's oh, not yet. I'm almost, yeah. I'm almost Something. Year older. <laughs> oh, Liam. Hi, Liam Legrand, or Brando, as I call you, because you're, Tom yeah, Brando. Brando, Brando is your profile picture, who is my fave. Uh, he says, too bad Sin City 2 doesn't come out in Australia till September. Too Sorry. bad you didn't know which two to use in that sentence. I'm Grab really <laughs> that it doesn't happen for you till later on. But go and see 20,000 Days on Earth and tell me what it's like because I am really hopeful for this film, so I want to see it as soon as it comes to America, which I think isn't for another few months. Oh. You know who would like that movie? My dad. 
loves oh, Nick yeah. Cave. Yeah. He used to play Nick Cave when I was a child to the point where every time I hear or heard, into my arms, oh, Lord, I was like, yeah. So only now am I starting to appreciate it again. <laughs> but I think this film looks fascinating. Would you go and see it? Sure. I'm actually, I feel like I'm maturing. <laughs> I feel like I'm maturing as a person. I'm actually kidding. I'm kidding. I'm not. I'm a big kid. <laughs> yeah, obviously. <laughs> I'm younger days than you, though. And you have only had one sip of wine. I had a sip so... of wine. <laughs> should have seen her on the wine tour. So that is what you should go and see in Australia. I wish I had even more info about it, but I'm purposely trying to stay away from reading too many reviews because I want to be surprised by this film and it sounds like it's got a lot of surprises in store. So if you're in Australia, please go and see it. Let me know how it is. So we've done America, check. We've done what to see in Australia, check. Now it's time to get on your computers. Yeah. You've got Netflix, iTunes, all the likes. You want a night at home, what should they watch? One that's up your alley, Maud. Captain America Winter Soldier oh, is yeah. available on iTunes. So oh. far just to buy, but it'll be available to rent very shortly. This has been my favourite comic book film in the past few years. I know, you didn't like it as much as I did. But I mean, everyone loved it. It's my favourite comic book film of this year. Why is definitely, that? Because it feels like a film. It's a proper film, not just for fanboys. Yeah. It's a complete film within itself. I've spoken before on the internet how I don't really like the MacGuffin. So a MacGuffin is a term coined by Alfred Hitchcock which is basically the object that people are chasing. The object itself oh. has no value whatsoever. In every Marvel movie so far, there's been a MacGuffin that they're chasing. Guardians of the Galaxy is an example, which mm -hmm. is a really fun film. We've spoken about Power it before, Stone. really liked it. Mm -hmm. But there's an object, the orb that they're chasing. Mm -hmm. The bad guys want it. The good guys have it. It has no real meaning. You don't really know exactly where it fits in, and you're not worried about it actually destroying the Earth because you know it's going to continue Can on. Can we name three MacGuffins that we've seen? So there's Transformers. Oh, yeah. They're yeah. chasing the, the, the cube, yeah. which the was from tesseract. the glasses. Wasn't a Tesseract thing at one point? I have no idea. Um, Maybe the cube. There's another object. Come on, guys, playing at home. There's a question box just there. Type it in there. Yeah. What if they needed an item? There have been so many of them. And that's the trouble is that they're forgettable. It doesn't matter because all that MacGuffin is doing is setting up the big final act between the good guys and the bad guys. Harry Potter was a MacGuffin. <laughs> oh, Him my himself. God. But he does matter. But things like but the But it was the Horcruxes. Horcruxes. The oh. Horcruxes is... They are a MacGuffin, oh, definitely. The whole last book you needed is the Deathly Hallows. It happens a lot, but the thing that I liked about Captain America Winter Soldier is it didn't have one. That's really true. And it was based very much on 70s political thrillers, which are my jam. So I liked that level of intrigue mm. that was throughout. I liked what they did with the action completely. Mm -hmm. Something different with the parkour. Yes. It, it felt more real. Uh, Chris I, Evans was kind of funny in this one too. He had a humour, a sense of humour, whereas in other films... We got like, over that he'd been frozen and he thawed out. Thawed. Exactly. Thawed out. Marvel. Very good. Can't wink. And we got to know more about uh, Black Widow, Natasha, Romanoff. Yes. Yeah, they're, they're great together. But you're kind of going, why aren't you... But... Yeah, but no. Oh, yeah, Paul, oh, Sato... Craig Sutton, hi, Sato. He hey. says, Pulp Fiction suitcase. Absolutely. Brilliant example. You don't even know what is in the suitcase. And it doesn't matter. And bright. And doesn't light. matter. Uh, Don Owens says, Winter Soldier was amazing. Third best film in the MCU. I would say it's one of the best, but that's just me. We're going to talk about that one. That's great. Uh, I love how he Don, uh, Don also did the three. The Tesseract, the Ether. The and ether, ether and the orb. The ether? The ethernet cable? Where's the <laughs> ether from? I thought that was a Harry Potter thing, no? Ether? No. I know Harry Potter like it. It's a second language. That's what I'm bilingual. And Sato says, is your jacket from Dark Knight Return? No, this is the Killing Joke, actually. The Killing Joke comic. Check it. Oh, this is not... Okay, she's going to... She's going to... Oh, I'm getting crap. <laughs> we saw it. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Adventure Time's in bed with Mona Alicia. And Liam says uh, the best movie MacGuffins are the case and the Maltese Falcon. That is a great example 
of a MacGuffin and a MacGuffin done right. Classic movie. What's that one? Classic movie. It's from the Maltese. Oh, that's the name of the movie. It's both the name of the movie and the MacGuffin. Anyway, so I loved Captain America Winter Soldier. What did you like about it or what didn't didn't you like about it? Look, I did enjoy the movie. I think that uh, Marvel's been on a roll this year. Um, I, I think that all the movies have been kind of good. They've been kind of good, but now they've nailed it great. Yeah. Um, so, like I explained, uh, Chris Evans is funny in it. These little jokes where you've got Anthony Mackie running around and then he's just, just getting lapped and lapped. Like, every time someone runs fast now, I kind of have a chuckle to myself because it reminds me of that. Um, I liked that there was the political shift in there. Mm -hmm. When you thought that you knew everything there was to know about it, there's this Hail Hydra that you're like, what? And something that felt quite safe and like a sanctuary was corrupted. And mm -hmm. I think that that's a really great part of it. Bringing um, in someone like Robert Redford. With is the condor of flight. Three days of the condor. But yeah. the condor has to fly at some stage. <laughs> Maybe it takes him three days. That's yeah. fine. We're not judging the condor for not being a superior bird. Um, I did like Robert Redford in it. I thought that was a great appearance by him. And when you do have a caliber actor like that who's you know, esteemed being in a Marvel movie, you're like, boom, there's the weight behind it. You know that everyone's mm -hmm. kind of kind of into it now. The Russo brothers did a really good job, and I can't wait for them to come back for my yes. number three. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I do think I, I like I've liked these better than the Iron Man's. I like Robert Downey Jr. as a better superhero. He's very entertaining, but in terms of storyline, I really felt like this one was good. And yeah. Sebastian Stan has got a great set of lips. Yeah, he doesn't get to smile much in this movie. He's got a great pouch. He has a great robot arm in this too. Ha -ha. But I thought Winter Soldier was a great villain mm -hmm. because he's scary. He doesn't say anything or do anything. Good best friend. I know. He what got that we... emotional. What if we both got frozen? What if I turned evil and I was suddenly, like, not smiling? That would be weird. Think think about this. Who's going to turn evil? That one. And I'm going to try and kill And I'll be like, what? <laughs> You'll be running We used to be friends. <laughs> Wait for us. Thanks to Don Owens, who also cleared up that the ether was from Thor to the Dark oh, World. Oh, of course. Confession. See, I just... Oh, you haven't seen it? Never did. Went to see it on the plane, but ended up watching X-Men instead. I wasn't such a fan. I like... Loki with Thor, mm -hmm. but I prefer Thor when he's in the human world, right? Because that's when it's really funny. Yes, having this awkward huge guy doing another. Exactly, that's yes. the scenes that I love. And the Dark World was very much in the alien planets wherever he's from. Yes, fantastic. I don't know exactly where he's from. Uh, yes, Transformers have the cosmic cube. That's right. Don said Hydra is the MacGuffin and Winter Soldier because it affected Shield. I don't think so because Hydra is more of a concept rather than a physical it's a, object. It's a corporation. So that's more of like a political influx, a political, a political instability. Yeah. Uh, if we just keep doing that, it's going to make <laughs> sense. Uh, but, you know, usually we're chasing the scene. Um, oh, the Ark great... of the Covenant was an important MacGuffin from Tyler Miles. Ark, of course, in Raiders. Raiders of the Lost Ark. That's that's a great example. But it, uh, it was a MacGuffin, but a MacGuffin done. Right. Very well. I just feel like nowadays with a lot of the Marvel films, mm. like I know what's coming. I'm not worried about the orb. I know they're going to get it. <laughs> but it could destroy the guy. No, I'm not worried. But you must show that. No, I'm not worried. <laughs> I'm not worried. <laughs> cool. Um, we've got one from... I I did... I studied Chinese in in primary school and Japanese in year eight. Yeah, but... Ni hao won hao shou or maybe it's uh, Spideska, no. Ha, it's Liam Marlow. Hey, Maud, how did you get on the project? He saw you when you were on the project the other week right. talking about Robin Williams. Ah, there you go. Um, believe it or not, I'm an entertainment reporter. <laughs> uh, I moonlight as one anyway. Um, and no, I've done she does. And she's been doing it for years. Yes. I was actually the entertainment reporter for Wake Up uh, on Channel 10. So, in Australia? Yes, in Australia. So I guess that they had my number from that. Simple as that. But this is not about me. This is Malone. <laughs> so off. I recommend watching Captain America Winter Soldier mm -hmm. on iTunes. I'm looking forward to seeing it again because I think it has more layers that I didn't see in cinema. I'm hoping. You know what else has layers? Star Wars. An onion. Oh. <laughs> They're going to be like, Princess like Leia? <laughs> It's went to your go-to. So, Morty, that brings us to our theme of the week. What's the theme? What is your favourite 
comic book movie? Ooh. What would you say? God, there's so many. Not even in like the recent times when Marvel's kind of laid out their, their plan um, with the standalones, the Avengers, et cetera, et cetera. But we, we saw Watchmen, mm -hmm. DC. Mm -hmm. We saw, you know, we've seen the graphic novels, which is like Sin City and 300. Yep. Even Scott Pilgrim. Technically yeah. a comic book adaptation, which gets, you know, not enough love. I oh, really enjoyed that. I one. love that Chris movie. Chris Evans was in that too. Yes, he was. That guy liked him in Playing movie. a movie star. But what's my favourite? Is yours Winter Soldier? No, if oh. I had to choose an overall favourite, it would be, I want to say Batman mm. Begins because... It changed the game for me. It made me realize that, that they're not crap. Yeah, it made me realize that uh, comic book characters, when treated properly, are interesting and three dimensional and have shades of light and dark. But a lot of dark. A lot of dark in that film. But I would say The Dark Knight then took it even another step further. Yeah. The Batman Begins was great at setting up the world. Suddenly everything made sense. Yeah. I mean, they made There's the guy a dressing with a painted up face. <laughs> a bat makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And then set up how the villains would dress up as well because mm -hmm. to meet him on that level. So The Dark Knight with, of course, one of the best villains in recent history, the Joker played yeah. by the late great Heath Ledger. Yeah, he was just... That for me just elevated the comic book genre, yeah. if you will to a completely different level. I don't think I breathed during his scenes. I couldn't. I wasn't capable of it. And then I'd be like, because <gasps> I was like winded by it. He's the scariest villain because he had nothing to lose mm. and he did not care about anything. It wasn't like he was in it for the money. Or he was hurt and there was revenge, revenge. fueling him. He just liked going a bit crazy and liked the madness and wanted to wreak havoc on the world and watch it burn. Great movies. I'll give you that. Great film. So... The Dark Knight in particular, but the whole trilogy for me is my favourite. Mm -hmm. And now I feel like they're going a little bit too dark with everything. We just saw the first image from Ant-Man, and I know it's going to be more comedic, and that was just one image we saw of Paul Rudd. Brooding. Brooding. <laughs> but Sad Ant-Man. Everybody's brooding. Hoods up. Ben Affleck's Batman. Brooding. Henry's Superman. Brooding. Uh, I, the new posters for um, Batman vs Superman is... <sighs> That's cool, though. I like how it compares with the comics. Indeed. Um, so what is your favourite, if you had to pick one or I a couple? I loved Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. But I'd only, when I realised that it was becoming a movie, I got into the comics a little bit, and it was a little tongue-in-cheek, like Rocket and Groot, they're kind of funny, but then, uh, again, has that predictable nature. But the MacGuffin got me fluffing and muffin. <laughs> I really liked it. Yeah. That's not my favourite comic okay. book adaptation. What is your favourite? Um, I'll give you a hint. You ready? X-Men. I think that they've done the best job. Um, it was a kind of around the same time when comic book was making a resurfacing. Um, I just think that Days of Future Past, you saw my face during that. Oh, I was yeah. just overwhelmed. I was eating it up uh, like a kid at a buffet. I just thought it was so well done. And then recently on a flight, I went back and started watching all the X-Men again, and I just I just love it. And it has that kind of campy cheesiness, but not enough to, to kind of laugh at it. It still... It's still serious. Sense. Hugh Jackman is such a great Wolverine. His standalones are terrible. Um, but I, I don't know, I've always had an affinity with X-Men, especially with the cartoons and comics. I thought it was really clever what they did with Days of Future Past to be able to bring both casts together mm. and then be able to wipe the slate clean mm. for the future. Really smart. And managing to balance that many characters within the one movie. That part hurt. That part hurt. A slate clean. Wiping the slate clean. Well, back. oh wait, I thought we were talking about the. End. Yeah. Well, yeah, I might be spoiling it a little, but hopefully people have seen. It oh, okay. Um, I'm trying to be general. There was a pseudo. Spoiler. There was a pseudo ending that made me warm and fuzzy. Yes. Yes. So we we'll, we'll keep it to that. But I think actually, out of those two recent X Men movies, I prefer Days of Future Past. I mean, I prefer First Class. Oh, right. Over Days of Future Past. Right. I didn't like J-Lo as Mystique. J-Law? Oh, you didn't like her? J-Law. No. 
No, I didn't think she's. I think she's a great Katniss, not a great, not as great a Mystique. Or oh, drop the ball on that. No, one. I liked it. I like the whole '70s styling of First Class. Matthew Vaughan is so great when it comes to production design. Mm. That was really and um, McAvoy and Fassbender. I just want to watch them all day. I didn't like how Beast was created. Oh yeah. Didn't need to be like that. I thought it was clever that they decided to say that Beast turned blue because he had some of Mystique's DNA in there. But that's not how it happened. Yeah. So do you prefer the new uh, X-Men's to the older X-Men's? Or are you like it all as a whole franchise? I would like to fantasy... What is this thing that they're trying to get us to do? Fantasy football? I would like to fantasy pick my own team. Yeah. So I would like Rebecca um, Romaine, Romaine yep. as Mystique, but I would like to not have Rogue. <laughs> um, I would like to have uh, Kelsey Grammer's Beast. Yeah. But I would like to have. Oh, that's actually mean. I liked both Magneto's. Michael Fassbender. Sorry, had to think about it. Um, I think they're both great. Fassbender. Oh, okay. <laughs> Don't ask me to say Benedict's name. <laughs> no, I will not. Okay, so let's take some comments. So Liam Ask says, your questions right now because we're going to fly through them. Liam says that he wants that so badly, so take it off and send it down under. Uh, Liam also says... <laughs> take it! <laughs> Liam also says that his all-time favourite comic book movies are Superman and Sin City. Oh, Which Superman, I would ask? Mm. Hel- I'm going to guess Man of Steel. Man of Steel? Tyler says, Hellboy 2, The Golden Army is a great underrated comic book. There's going to be another one. I really love Hellboy, actually. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Marcus Townsend says, why does Ben Affleck's Batman have a butt on his chin? He has a strong chin. But I, don't I think mind that suits, on chins. I it think suits the character, gorgeous. especially when you're in the mask and you only see that much. I think to have a really strong chin is important mm, for Batman. Mm, mm. You, Over butt. <laughs> you did it. Don Owens loves Avengers. Are you an Avengers fan? Yes, I like the dynamic between them all. They all bring so much. Uh, Marcus says he's a tall guy. Oh yeah. Hopefully he has more to do next yeah, movie. Yeah, he wasn't given much. I just saw a film with Jeremy Renner that I'll be talking about soon. It's it's under embargo, but you finally get to see him act, and he's really good. Oh, good. Uh, Marcus says his favorite comic book movie is Thomas Jane as the Punisher. Wow, it's one I actually haven't seen. He's showing off. <laughs> and Tyler says, "Grace with me, The Dark Knight." Not only was it intense, gripping, and multi-layered, but it was the film that got me into movies made the movie geek I am today. Hey, That's cheers great. Cheers Dark Knight. Cheers. cheers Dark Knight. We should make a wine called The Dark Knight. Yeah. <laughs> we should just do wine movie podcasts all the time. Yes. I don't know if it's gone as smoothly as usual, but That's very okay. true. <laughs> what if you, like, go, well... The jalapeno in this wine is good for the hot and spicy moment you're having. <laughs> oh, Liam's clarified. Yeah, he's a classic movie buff like me. He likes the 1978 version of Superman, not Man of Steel. Well, I think that brings us to the end of Malone's Movie Minutes hey, from you- my bed. Yes, and from Geek Bomb's account. But don't worry, you can be catching this video if we figure out how to rip it off of Geek Bomb. On Malone's Movie Minutes uh, YouTube page, you can catch her youtube.com forward slash movies are my jam. If you haven't subscribed and liked, guys, do it. Now's the time. And you know what? If you've got an afternoon off, go back through every video and press like and comment. (laughs) Just say something lovely. That'd be really, really cool. That would be nice. Uh, She's also on Twitter, at Alicia Malone. And you can catch her on Instagram, where she does a lot of these. And a lot of these. But she'll never do this. <laughs> You've done that more than any of them. <laughs> I, know, I should say I'll never do this. Oh, there it is. Oh, wow. Cool. All right. <laughs> My name is Maud Garrett. I'm um, on Instagram um, and I'm also on Twitter. And I am on Geek Bomb, which is where you're watching this. So if you're new here, hello. Press subscribe and like and stay with me forever. <laughs> I, I do we, uh, weekend stuff with people, and it's cool. Stop this. <laughs> okay. Ah. Thanks for joining us. Bye.